Hello there and welcome to this day in history for December 1st. Welcome to December. <laughs> and December 1st is the 335th day of the year in the Gregorian calendar with 30 days remaining to the end of the year. And today we're going to start in the year 1779 when George Washington established winter headquarters at Morristown, New Jersey, settling into a second season there. In 1805, the ninth Dalai Lama was born, and he died in 1815 at the age of nine and was the only Dalai Lama to die in childhood and was the first of a string of four Dalai Lamas to die before reaching 22 years of age. In 1824, the United States presidential election, since no candidate received received a majority of the total electoral college votes in the election, the United States House of Representatives was given the task of deciding the winner in accordance with the 12th Amendment to the United States Constitution. In 1862, in his State of the Union Address, President Abraham Lincoln reaffirmed the necessity of ending slavery as ordered 10 weeks earlier in the Emancipation Proclamation. In 1913, the Ford Motor Company introduced the first moving assembly line for the mass production of an entire automobile. His innovation reduced the time it took to build a car from more than 12 hours to two hours and 30 minutes. In 1913, American actress and singer Mary Martin was born. She has an extensive resume in entertainment, both on stage and in film, and my first memory of her was as Peter Pan in the Broadway production of Peter Pan. She also happens to be the mother of Larry Hagman, who we've talked about a couple times in the last few weeks. She died in 1990 at the age of 76. She's buried right over there in Weatherford, Texas, so we ought to plan a day trip out there sometime to go find her grave. We won't find Larry's grave, though, because he was cremated and his ashes scattered. In 1918, Iceland became a sovereign state, yet remains part of the Danish kingdom. In 1935, Woody Allen, the American actor, director, and screenwriter, was born. In 1939, American golfer and sportscaster Lee Trevino was born. On December 1st of 1940, American comedian, actor, producer, and screenwriter Richard Pryor was born. In 1947, English magician, poet, and mountaineer, I didn't know he was a mountaineer. Alistair Crowley died. Ooh, on December 1st, 1949, Colombian drug lord and narco-terrorist Pablo Escobar was born on this date. I heard that when they finally took him down, he had so much cash stored away, he had more than three years the annual budget of Interpol in American cash dollars stashed away. I guess that drug trade's pretty lucrative. Nice for him, but bad for all the addicts and the lives that they touch. In 1955, on December 1st, in Montgomery, Alabama, Rosa Parks was jailed for refusing to give up her seat on a public bus to a white man in violation of the city's racial segregation laws. What happened next was the Montgomery Bus Boycott, organized by a young Baptist minister named Martin Luther King Jr. She's considered the mother of the civil rights movement. She was born in Tuskegee, Alabama in 1913. She worked as a seamstress, and in 1943, she joined the Montgomery chapter of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, NAACP. And according to a Montgomery City Ordinance in 1955, African Americans were required to sit at the back of the bus, but they were also obligated to give up those seats to white riders if the front of the bus filled up. Well, Ms. Parks was in the first row of the black section when the white driver demanded that she give up her seat to a white man. Parks' refusal was spontaneous, but not merely brought on by her tired feet, as the popular legend goes. No, it happens that civil rights leaders had been planning a challenge to Montgomery's racist bus laws for several months, and Parks had been privy to this discussion. And as soon as they heard of Parks' arrest, the NAACP and other African-American activists called for a bus boycott to be held by black citizens on Monday, December 5th. 
They spread the word by sending out flyers, and activists formed the Montgomery Improvement Association to organize the protest. The first day of the bus boycott was a great success, and that night, the 26-year-old Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. told a large crowd gathered at church that the great glory of American democracy is the right to protest for right. He emerged as the leader of the bus boycott and received numerous death threats from opponents of integration. At one point, his home was bombed, but he and his family escaped bodily harm. This boycott stretched on for more than a year. Participants carpooled or walked to work in school when no other means were possible. Now, here's the silly thing on the city's part. African Americans composed 70% of the Montgomery bus ridership. You cannot give up 70% of your business and survive. And so sure enough, the municipal transit system suffered gravely during the boycott. On November 13, 1956, the U.S. Supreme Court struck down Alabama State and Montgomery City bus segregation laws as being in violation of the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. And on December 20th, King issued the following statement, The year-old protest against city buses is officially called off, and the Negro citizens of Montgomery are urged to return to the buses tomorrow morning on a non-segregated basis. The boycott ended the next day. Rosa Parks was among the first to ride the newly desegregated buses. Martin Luther King Jr. and his non-violent civil rights movement had won its first great victory. There would be many more to come. Rosa Parks died on October 24, 2005, and I think we mentioned it on that day in history. Three days later, the U.S. Senate passed a resolution to honor her by allowing her body to lie in honor in the U.S. Capitol Rotunda. In 1959, Antarctica made a military-free continent. Twelve nations, including the United States and the Soviet Union, signed the Antarctica Treaty, which bans military activity and weapons testing on that continent. In 1977, Pinwheel is launched, which is now Nickelodeon. 1990, shortly after 11 a.m. on December 1, 1990, 122 feet below the English Channel, workers drilled an opening the size of a car through a wall of rock. This was no ordinary hole. It connected the two ends of an underwater tunnel, linking Great Britain with the European mainland for the first time in more than 8,000 years. And I think that's going to do it for us today. As always, links to my research are included in the show notes. Thank you so much for watching. Give it a like if you enjoyed this video. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. And feel free to share this thing around. And while you're here, check out my other channel, 8 Susquehanna. There's a link in the show notes to that as well. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Okie dokie, Smokey. Blah, 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 coffee mug. <laughs> it's late enough in the day that we're off coffee and on fizzy water. <laughs> Just read the words. Just read the words. <laughs> That's a lot of words. Hope I pronounced that right. Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men. Did not a man. This is why I don't do live shows. <laughs>